This is a quick video related to uh, Ghidra. Um, so when you install Ghidra, so I just finished installing it. If you run Ghidra um, as it is from the desktop, you'll find out uh, the scaling. Since Ghidra is mainly decided to run on um, Windows machines and uh, Java, it's built on Java, so it's kind of get weird, weird long scale. So if you follow the instruction on the homework, you could fix it, but I'm showing it here again how to do it. So after you install it, you need to change the directory because this is open source. You can change anything on your configuration file. In the opt directory on Ghidra, um, there's four called support. Okay, so you go into the support folder, you'll find out there is a configuration file file called launch properties. This is basically the properties uh, done for launching. So if you go to launching, um, uh, if you go into nano um, launch. Uh, <clears throat> launch start properties and then open the file if you go this is all the different configuration I'm no, we're not worried about everything else the only thing we are worried about here is the heading with the let's see if I can find it, it shouldn't be it's not a very big file because basic configuration the Windows settings uh, where are they here uh, the following following effect rendering on different platforms in this you are on a virtual platform you need to uh, change few things to figure it out this might work differently if you have a Mac I'm running on a Windows so only thing I change here is the Java UI scale to one okay oh, so you go find it I'm on nano if you use a VI editor you have to use a different way to change them you might want to change for an example um, this one here, Java to X render to true to false. So you're gonna have to play with the settings. Only this is these four settings to play with them to see if it changes anything. So I'm gonna control X just to save, same name, see what happens. Okay, now when I open Ghidra, it's on a smaller scale window. So for me, I only had to change that settings. Once you fix that setting, it should work perfectly fine. Uh, again, like I said, um, this is the guideline. It's a very nice software if you learn it. Uh, people who master malware reverse engineering make a lot of money. Okay, and it's fun if you're into that kind of, um, if you have patience and into reverse engineering. So that's a quick video. So that should fix the issue. And then uh, all you have to do is like uh, create a new project. Okay, I don't have the malware file here. Um, name is, the, let's say this is. Uh, project 03 you're working on the class once you add the project okay you go to file you import a file this is where you add the malware like let's say sample this is for an example it's a malware file I don't have the malware file on this machine once you have the file it shows up down here double click on it it should open on uh, the debugger so this is a debugger this is the debugger that actually you can run through malware designed by uh, this is first developed by NSA so I'll stop there uh, let you explore there uh, software.